Dr. Four come out to condemn one, the degeneration from civility to criminality that was witnessed in the different parts of the country as individuals and groups expressed their dissatisfaction at the arrest of the presidential candidates. The extreme force with which the members of the armed forces and the police dealt with demonstrators, to wit the use of live bullets to disperse and armed civilians, which has consequently caused the wounding and death of some Ugandans. The violent acts of retaliation targeted at officers of the police, the army, and the LDUs by the general public. The high-handed treatment, including arrests, deterrence, and brutalizing of members of the media who had a mandate to ensure they informed, uh, they informed the country of the developments. The deployment of non-uniformed security operatives welding guns and recklessly using the guns on the streets, which exposed the public to untraceable, perpet uh, untraceable perpetrators. For police, there are procedures of how you change and heighten the levels. Police has a right to shoot you and kill you if you reach a certain level of violence. Can I repeat? Police has a right, or any security, if you leave a certain level, they have a right to shoot you and you'll die for jail. It is very unfortunate when you hear uh, a top government official saying that you can kill, that police can shoot and kill. That is illegal. It is not founded any, under any law. The role, the duty of the police is to protect, is to safeguard, is to guarantee order, but not to kill the very civilians they are mandated to protect. The role of the army is also very, very well stipulated under the Constitution and under the UPDF Act. It is very unfortunate, and we still uh, uh, call upon the Inspector General of Police to be in charge of the police. And because of the torture which was meted out by the previous forces, it was now a requirement that even if you have a uniform, you must have a name tag on that uniform such that if a person has been injured by the actions of that person, it is very easy for a person to claim a right in courts of law that it is Frank who did this to me. Therefore, we do condemn in the strongest terms the persons who never had uniforms carrying guns. If, for instance, another person comes another day, not uniform, and comes and robs me, how will the police run away from it that it is not them doing it? How do we expect a vulnerable person, an ordinary person, to differentiate between a robber who has a gun and he has come to rob him and uh, a police officer who, who has no uniform?